Coming up on Mountain News this morning, people across the Commonwealth celebrate a historic holiday here in the U.S. And one eastern Kentucky county holds a fundraiser in hopes of supporting our veterans. Dedicated to eastern and southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Hi, it's Monday morning, just seconds away from 5 o'clock. Jim Freeman in on this Juneteenth, uh, June the 20th. And uh, Brandon Robinson's here. We're talking more heat, I think, aren't we, sir, after a pretty nice weekend. It was a pretty nice weekend. Juneteenth, I'll correct you real quick, Jim, was actually yesterday. Well, that's Today's true, the day we're today's celebrating. Holiday. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah, a, lot, a lot of places are closed today as a result. We, exactly. Yeah, yeah, we yes, sir. But that. yes, yeah. uh, we're going to be seeing some summer weather return today. A little warmer, but not as humid tomorrow. Definitely humid, humid as we get into summer officially. This morning, chilly, 45 in Clintwood, 49 in Harlan, 48 in Jonesville, but 60 on the other side of the scale, Pikeville, and 61 in Jackson. There's a lot of 50s out there in Irvine. They drop into the 40s for too long there at 50 exactly, along with Monticello, Manchester, Hazard, and Williamsburg, all at 50 this morning. Dew points, very pleasant. It's almost cool outside. Almost needed a jacket this morning, but again, Keep them put up for now because we're going to see the temperatures go right up as we head deeper in the day. You see there basically most of those are below the refreshing category there at 50 degrees on the dew points. So you might need a little coffee this morning to get you going. A little extra because it's Monday, but you'll probably want to switch over to iced coffee before too long because temperatures will jump quickly once the sun comes up. We'll be in the upper 50s by 8 and maybe the 60s by 9. Jim? Brandon, thank you. Friends, family, and a community are mourning the loss of a former mayor. John George Augusta, also known as Johnny, died at the age of 75 this past Saturday at his home surrounded by family. He served as Cumberland mayor and a member of the city council. He is known for his construction talent, resulting in founding and operating Augusta Construction, where he served communities in southeastern Kentucky and northeast Tennessee. But before that, he served in the military after being drafted. He served as flight deck troubleshooter and airman with Flight Squadron 11 for the U.S. Navy. He also survived the USS Forrestal explosion in 1967. He received an honorable discharge in January 1972. And we have the schedule for services being held for Augusta. All of them are being held in Johnston City, Tennessee. Visitation is scheduled for tomorrow, Tuesday, from 5 to 9 p.m. at Tetrick Funeral Services. A celebration of life will be held Wednesday at noon in the Tetrick Funeral Services Chapel, and a graveside service will follow at Mountain Home National Cemetery at 2 p.m. For the first time, the city of Frankfort is celebrating Juneteenth. President Joe Biden signed a bill last year making Juneteenth a federal holiday, but it's not a state holiday here in the Commonwealth. Governor Andy Beshear spoke at the celebration and also handed out prizes. Scholarships were awarded to student essay contest winners. Participants were asked to examine the history of a topic of racial injustice. What you see today is a joyful uh, day of celebration with people here from uh, all races and all backgrounds uh, trying to live up to Dr. King's dream and the promise uh, that was made on Juneteenth that this could be a country for everyone. Yesterday's event in Frankfurt was part of our June day for part of a four-day Juneteenth celebration hosted by FORR. Today, a community picnic is being held on the Capitol lawn featuring reenactments of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s famous speeches. Eastern Kentuckians also spent time celebrating the historic holiday yesterday. To celebrate this holiday, one Eastern Kentucky organization hosted its first Juneteenth event. People with the Eastern Kentucky Social Club Lynch Chapter held their first Juneteenth event in Harlan County inviting community members to learn more about the history of the day, to enjoy each other's company, and to celebrate what it means to be free. And I think it was very important for me to play the role to help the Eastern Kentucky Social Club bring this forth, that we're here, we want to be well represented and well known, that we uh, want to celebrate the holiday. Andrea Massey, who was also one of the event's organizers, says she hopes to help this event grow even more in the future. The Southeast Kentucky African American Museum and Cultural Center hosted a Juneteenth celebration in Hazard yesterday. The celebration was held downtown at Triangle Park. The recruiting coordinator at HCTC says celebrating the holiday this past weekend was important for the community. 
It's important because it's it's our Independence Day. Uh, African American and uh, our other brown and uh, native brothers and sisters, this is our Independence Day. Juneteenth will be observed today. Some celebrate Juneteenth in Lexington with a literary, literary event at the Lyric Theater. The Afrol Action Poets put on a performance to both respect the holiday and to highlight the work of some talented members of their group, both old and new. The event featured Kentucky Poet Laureates of the past and present. This night was special for the poets in more ways than one as they also welcomed six new members into their fold. It has just felt like a great boon to me um, living in West Virginia and knowing that I am part of this wider community of poets of color in this region, knowing that we are not working in isolation, that we are really part of this wider community. Officials hope people took the time to remember their ancestors and recognize the culture that has been woven into the region. Back here in our region, Knott County officials hosted a veterans fundraiser event at Mine Made Venture Park during the weekend. For a $20 donation to the local DAV chapter, people took their ATVs out of the park's trails. Knott County Judge Executive Jeff Dobson says he hopes to continually find ways to support veterans. Beyond their, uh, their commitment, their service to our country over the uh, for our freedom, you know, uh, you know, we want to, uh, to work with them. Knott County officials say they plan to host more events at Mine Made Adventure Park for the community. And we thank you for getting your day started with us here on Mountain News this morning. Coming up next, fire crews in New Jersey battle the elements to try and put out a rapidly growing forest fire. After a very nice weekend, the thermostat starts its upward trend again today. For the last day of spring, I'll have the latest forecast in about three minutes.